Hi, my name is Chris Knudsen. I'm superintendent of Florence Unified School District. At Florence Unified School District number one, we have a mission of kids first. Every decision that we make needs to be based on what is best for kids. Our vision for Florence Unified School District is a district by design, not by chance. And we have six core values, effective leadership, integrated technology, vertically articulated extracurricular engagement, quality teaching and learning, a culture of continuous improvement, and clear and collaborative relationships. We want all of our 1,000 employees focusing on those six core values to make Florence unified by design and not by chance. We have to have great leadership in place in order to make our schools great. We need our leaders to know the formula of success at each site and to distribute leadership. It's imperative that we build trust with our kids and our parents. It's imperative that we build confidence in our students because when confidence is high for our kids, the success rate goes through the roof. And what ends up happening is more and more success as a result of people being confident. Uh, it has a snowballing effect, which only adds to the culture in our schools where all kids want to be a part of it and be a part of winning. Uh, in athletics, academics, the arts. It's imperative that everyone in our organization understands what the mission and vision and our core values are. And it's our leaders' responsibility to train all of our employees. It takes effective communication. It takes our leaders setting high expectation and holding uh, employees and students accountable to those high expectations. Another very important aspect of effective leadership is resource management. In today's day and age, um, we have to be able to do more with less. It takes building leadership capacity. We want to grow our leaders from within, and we have to have a, a system in place for our employees to grow leadership capacity. The Florence Unified School District prides itself in being an innovative leader in technology. I've been here since 2005 and I've seen the transformation of technology used between our teachers and our students. Currently we offer one-to-one -one computing at all of our high schools, all three of our high schools. We also have Chromebooks and tablets throughout our K-8s, um, interactive devices, boards, uh, student response systems document cameras, our teachers have the tools, our students have the tools to be successful and be future ready. Thanks to our community, we're ready to take it to the next level. Whether it's virtual reality, augmented reality, coding, STEM in all of our school, we're ready to take this to the next level and do things that other school districts just aren't doing. The technology team is ready to support everything we're doing in the, in the classroom. Supporting our teachers through professional development, supporting our students, making sure that the technology is, is there, they're, it's safe, secure, and they're ready to learn every day. Part of our district by design is having a strong infrastructure, wireless at all of our campuses, a strong bandwidth, and making sure that our students are safe and secure. FUSD is focusing on the extracurricular and sports activities to teach these transferable skills to the students. Uh, skills like dedication, sportsmanship, uh, teamwork, all of those things that are important when you get out into society trying to transfer those things into everyday life, everyday classroom activities. That way when they get to society, they'll be very successful. Well, part of the vertically articulated philosophy is that we will build from community ed. We're gonna start some um, co-ed partnerships with, with the sports there, and then we'll feed up into the K-8 programs, 
and that will eventually feed up into the high school programs. Building on that with the coaches, have them start and be involved in the community ed part of it. Move on, we'll have our K-8 coaches, those also being involved, and then eventually the high school. So we'll have a common philosophy, common knowledge, common uh, vocabulary. Part about building that foundation is we'd like to get our community members. We have a ton of community members who are dedicated, who love our kids, who are valuable, who are knowledgeable in these sports programs. So we'd like to reach out to them, have them involved with coaching, with mentoring, helping build our programs. So this year, uh, through the board adoption process, we have adopted Eureka Math, which is evidence-based and aligned K through eight. We followed suit with Springboard ELA curriculum for 6th through 12th grade. We have Kagan, which is an evidence-based cooperative learning structure. And we are also focusing this year super hard on incorporating universal design for learning so that no matter the level of the student, everybody is engaged with the content and the curriculum. PLCs or professional learning communities are important to FUSD because it brings teachers together to look at student work and to figure out where the weaknesses are in knowledge so that we can strengthen that knowledge base of the student. We all know that learning can't happen in the classroom without quality professional development. We have taken steps this year to separate kindergarten through eighth grade professional development from the high school. Each has different needs and each is individualized according to the way the teacher comes to us. So if a teacher comes to us through an alternative certification process, we have PD that fits their needs. If they're a veteran teacher that has been teaching 20 plus years, we have professional development that fits their needs. We also offer coaching opportunities through our instructional coaches that are site-based, so our teachers can utilize them to strengthen their weaknesses in the classroom. Additionally, we also have mentor teachers at almost every site that helps build teacher knowledge at the site level. We have a teacher evaluation system here at FUSD that focuses on student growth and is not punitive. It's ongoing, it's summative, and it's collaborative. So what this really means is that every day we as a district should be better than the day before. And if we all adhere to a culture of continuous improvement, we know that our students will continue to achieve at higher rates, will retain and train better staff, we'll have better leaders in the district, and we know that as a parent, you should see your child improving, and so we wanna have that same outcome for our schools. Uh, another component of a system of continuous improvement is always evaluating how you're allocating your resources. And resources is a broad term, but it's your personnel, it's your financial resources, it's your time. And so we want to invest our resources in things that have shown to be effective. So it's really about being strategic about that allocation, making sure that the things we invest in are worthwhile, that are having the outcomes that we want. And we're always continually evaluating that use of resources. So we really want to embed data-informed decision-making as a core practice into everything that we do in the district. And the reason why that's aligned to our um, area of continuous improvement is you can't make systemic improvements unless you have the data to justify your decisions. And so it really starts with fundamentally identifying those sources of data that we need to inform our practice, inform changes in our systems. So an example is our teacher evaluation system. All the things that we use to evaluate teachers are aligned to those evidence-based practices shown to improve student outcomes. So whether it be our questioning, our feedback techniques that teachers are using, our instructional models, all of those things are aligned to, to evidence-based practices that have been shown to be the most effective. We really want to embed a cyclical improvement process to foster the culture of continuous improvement. What that really means is always adhering, whether it be a classroom teacher, a department chair, a principal, a district director, or even a superintendent, always looking at the research, what that says about what's effective, applying those practices that are effective, taking data and evaluating that effectiveness, 
and then using all of that information to inform a next cycle. So the last piece of the continuous improvement process is really making sure that all of our internal systems within the organization are aligned to achieve the goals in our strategic plan. And that means that we don't have our business operations being disjointed from our curriculum and instruction, disjointed from our technology. Everything has to be integrated and be streamlined to be effective, to all focus on a singular goal, to achieve the same outcomes. And if those systems are not aligned, then we as a as an organization need to work to make sure that they are in alignment. A systemic collaboration um, allows us to work towards common goals. Um, I think the days of teachers going into classrooms and, and closing the door and working you know, out of their classroom without talking to any of it, those days are gone. Uh, I think collaboration towards common goals helps us, uh, helps us grow professionally. A chain of command in an organization is important because it gives structure and order to an organization. Without that structure, we would be in chaos. Um, it gives employees um, a supervisor that they can report problems to, um, they can make suggestions to. Um, it gives us an orderly process. We want to create um, safe environments for not just kids but for our employees so i think a culture establishing a culture of respect throughout an organization um, allows us to treat people with dignity fairness and thereby passing that along to the kids um, i think our roles here are to create safe environments for our kids and our employees and showing each other respect even when, at times when we disagree um, I think is building that culture of a safe um, environment.